Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Judy Gishira from ACK St. Joseph of Arimathea Parish. I serve as a lay leader and a reverend Samuel Githaida. I want to thank God most sincerely for giving me a chance to bring his word to you today. I also want to thank my vicar for allowing me to use the church platform to bring this message. I welcome you and let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are humbled before you. We want to commit ourselves to you as we listen to your word. May you use me as a vessel so that Lord God Almighty, what I am going to communicate to your people may be useful and may have a positive impact in their lives. Be with us, O oh God, give us concentration and give us understanding. For we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we are discussing a theme which is endurance and perseverance in the face of suffering. And the message is, in the face of suffering, we should not give up. It is drawn from Hebrews chapter 12, beginning to read at verse 1 to verse 3. And I read from NIV Bible. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a cloud of witness, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily enters goods, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. A Christian life is a journey that entails challenges and achievements. During this journey, we experience episodes of suffering that might push us to quit or lose focus. Experiencing these sufferings may sometimes make us quit and sometimes they make us lose hope in God. Today we are dealing with corona pandemic. Yesterday was something else. Tomorrow will be something else. But what is important is our ability to resist or withstand pain from suffering and remain firm and focused and not lose hope of our eternal life. The order of these verses pictures a Christian life as an athletic competition, a marathon and not a sprint. A marathon is a long distance race that is exhausting and requires endurance, persistence, patience, and self-discipline. A Christian marathon, therefore, requires believers to keep away from sin and hindrances that might distract them from finishing the race. In this race, we are not competing with other believers but we are racing against the enemy of our souls, who opposes God's kingdom and would want us to drop out. The main way to run with endurance, the race that is set before us, is fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him, endured the cross, scorning the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Brothers and sisters, let us consider him, who has endured hostility, and so that we will not grow weary or lose heart. Jesus is the author and finisher of our life. In Philippians 1, 6, and I read, says, he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus. In the face of suffering, 
It is easy to despair and give up hope and even lose our vision. But let us remain focused on Jesus by putting everything else aside. What we focus on drives our actions. The Bible says in Isaiah 26 verse 3, He who keeps in his mind focused on him will be put into perfect peace. We need our minds focused on Christ to know how he is moving and what he is doing. So by developing a prayerful lifestyle, where we start by singing a song and then reading the word of God will make us connected with God. Because every time we will be reflecting on the words that we read and the song that we had in the morning. I don't know whether you have this experience like I do. A song that I listen to in the morning keeps ringing in my mind every now and then during the day. So I have a chance to keep revisiting the words of that song and it makes me reflect much on God. We also need to associate ourselves with like-minded people. Like-minded, sorry, like-minded people of faith. So that when we gather, we are able to share what the Lord has done for us, the challenges that we are experiencing, and from each other, we can learn. So in a fellowship of believers, God will reveal himself. He will communicate in a manner that we will understood. The sharing will shed more light and deep understanding of the things of God. So it is important we keep that relationship. So let us also use the technology. Uh, when we are less busy, let us put some earphones and listen to the word of God and also let us listen to good music. Because in Romans 10, 17, it tells us, faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word of God. In the Bible, courage, endurance, and perseverance are greatly valued. James 5.11 says, As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. In Luke 18, 1 to 8, Jesus gives the parable of the persistent widow who was determined to get justice from an unjust judge. He says that the widow was only the widow only got justice because of her persistence. The judge neither feared God nor cared about what people would say. But because of her persistence, he decided to give her justice so that she could stop bothering him. Jesus gave this parable to demonstrate the value of perseverance and indicated that our prayers to God should be equally persistent. In Genesis 32, we are told about Jacob's endurance and perseverance. He wrestled with the angel of God the whole night and refused to let go until the angel of the Lord blessed him. Changed his name from Jacob to Israel. Perseverance is good because it builds our character and gives us hope. In a Christian life, we are expected to be courageous and face difficulties and suffering with endurance and perseverance. We should therefore 
be steadfast in our faith in confronting the challenges posed by the pandemic. We should also be discouraged by the crisis that we are facing and surely remember that God is still seated on the throne. So we continue to press on and tell ourselves that no circumstance will make us move away from our focus of eternal life. We read in 2 Timothy 1 and 7 that God did not give us a spirit of timidity, cowardice or fear, but of power, love and self-control. So like the widow, we must be persistent in our prayers and seek earnestly more than ever God to overturn the situation. It been in our favor, whether it is in our financial need, whether it is in the schooling of our children or any other calamities that we could be facing. In conclusion, we can confidently say Jesus is not only the author of our faith, he is the finisher of it as well. He has begun a good work in us and he will bring it to completion. Like Jesus, we should focus beyond the current sufferings, which could be emanating from the virus, but rather focus on the final price, which is the joy of internal life. We should therefore nurture a spirit of perseverance and endurance, especially at this time and season we are facing challenges. So let us press on without giving up until something happens. And I want to encourage us by downloading a song by one Joyce Irongo, which says, May the Lord bless you and may the peace of the Lord be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Take